Hey, cloud enthusiasts, welcome to another exciting session of AWS Tidbits, where we break down the latest and greatest for Amazon Web Services. I'm thrilled to be here with you today to explore some game-changing updates from November 2024. This is pre-reInvent, right? So the, the great conference of AWS has not happened. So we're going to cover things from AWS Postgres SQL going limitless to S3's massive bucket scaling increase We've got some seriously impressive developments to cover. So whether you're a DevOps engineer, cloud architect, or just passionate about staying current with AWS, you are in for some valuable insights. We'll be diving into eight key updates that are reshaping how we work with AWS. And so let's jump right in and see what Amazon has been cooking up for us. Starting with number one, let's talk about deploying EKS with Terraform. So we've covered some EKS deployments with Terraform before, but this one actually adds in a few of the Blueprint add-ons, including things like the CSI driver for EBS, including things like CloudWatch log integration for the control plane. All of this happens inside this beautiful tutorial. If we click on it and take another like, little dive here, right? This is from one of our community builders in AWS. This is going to cover everything in Terraform necessary to set up a VPC, including the module invoked, how to invoke the EKS module, what that setup looks like from a managed node group perspective. Notice these are M5 larges, notice they're spot. And then adding the CSI driver, adding CloudWatch observability, as well as the AWS load balancer, and last but not least, Carpenter for auto scaling, which is important. So this is going to walk you through all of the definitions necessary to enable Carpenter, enable spot termination, scaling, the version, et cetera, et cetera, right? Number two, some of you may be aware that when dealing with databases, there's always a limit of just kind of having one writer. And when I say databases, I mean relational databases. So the ones that are truly quote unquote acidic, right? Which is a quality for certain types of databases. Atomicity, item potency, consistency, and durability, right? Acid, a database being acid is typically what you see with transactional databases. Well, Postgres Aurora is a flavor of Postgres that is supported basically by a multi-reader capability with expanded storage. Now, limitless, versions of this Postgres database are now available where you can do horizontal scaling or sharding. Let's take a look at this for just a second. You've got a limitless database shard group and you've got these distributed transaction routers and they will distribute to multiple riders as needed depending on what data you are accessing. This is a great distinction for traditional databases because typically setting up shards like this requires a lot of application work as well as a lot of database work to manually segment your databases and make sure that they are like, like A through F, for example, and then G through K or L through O. Like it, it, it's interesting, like the, what the hoops you have to jump through in order to get this to function. With the limitless version of Aurora Postgres, they now will do a lot of that work for you and distribute your data using these transaction routers. So it's a different way of thinking about how to scale the normal single writer limitation of a traditional RDBMS. And this is great for operations because you will be asked to set this up, but it also allows you to scale while using traditional database technologies, something that previously we weren't doing. Next up for number three is a hands-on tutorial that basically just walks through some of the enhancements for the control plane observability that Amazon has recently enhanced the features of. So this is a hands-on guide. And so if we go look at this hands-on guide, what you'll see here is that it'll give you a walkthrough for first of all, how to basically get to the enhanced metrics. So for example, under control plane monitoring, you can now click in and see a lot of information about the control plane, like scheduler attempts, requests, pending pods, et cetera, some of which you couldn't actually see before. So they've enhanced the control plane dashboard. They've also allowed it to basically write to CloudWatch logs. So you can use CloudWatch log insights to search for these particular distinctions. Number four, Amplify now supports S3 for static web hosting. Amplify Hosting now integrates with AWS Amazon S3 for basically the ability to seamlessly host websites using S3 as the base. It also supports CloudFront, which includes that you can now do multiple domain names, you can do SSL certificates, and of course, get CloudFront's global CDN support. So it'll allow you to orchestrate everything you need to deploy your app in a static fashion using S3 as a backing end. Now, number five, I know this sounds strange, but it used to be that you only had 25 buckets in your account and then it was 50 and then it was 100, 
right? And they increased it recently to 10,000 buckets per account. And you might think, why would you need 10,000 buckets? You'd be shocked at like how many folders you need, especially for a large enterprise. Now what's happened is that AWS will now allow S3 to have up to a million buckets inside of a single account. The first 2000 are free, but after that you pay a small monthly fee for any additional bucket. This is kind of significant for those who like to have a lot of large sets of ephemeral buckets or categorizations for data. Number six, root user accounts can now be pseudoed. So if you know in Linux, when you like elevate credentials by basically, you know, never really logging in as root, well, the cool thing is, is that IAM, which is the Identity Access Management Service inside of AWS, now allows security teams to remove long-term root credentials from member accounts. And you can basically elevate your sessions to be the root user for specific actions. Now, this is very cool because it basically allows you to assume an elevated security persona that has root user permissions and you no longer need permanent root credentials. Now, this primarily works in the context of organizations if you're familiar with AWS, but it's one of those great features that is great to see with AWS because root user accounts have been a bane, <laughs> especially in the first you know five years of AWS's existence, but you still see them causing problems. So the ability to now assume root permissions in a temporary fashion is absolutely amazing. Okay, number seven, DynamoDB has basically reduced prices for both their throughput, this is their RCUs and WCUs, as well as global tables. So there have been significant price reductions, right? And this is mainly for on-demand mode, right? By you know, cutting costs by 50% and global tables by up to two thirds. Multi-region replicated rights are gonna now match single region pricing. So all of this was announced. As you click on this link, it now comes back, you see it's November 14th, where they basically outline everything that has been decreased inside of the DynamoDB setup. This is significant because DynamoDB is really great for scale. Now, I would highly recommend that if you're using DynamoDB, especially consistently, that you use some kind of reservation or infrequent access mode. But on-demand mode now supports a huge cost reduction, so that's always in our favor. Last but not least, an awesome announcement to make is that AWS has released basically a Chrome extension. This is a blog post that basically allows you to use Amazon Transcribe, Translate, and Bedrock to provide real-time transcription, translation, and summarization. So if we click into this blog post, what you'll see here is that this is an announcement of like everything that now is embedded into this simple Chrome extension that will allow you to convert live streams straight into usable translations right off the bat. It just basically does automatic language identification for streaming trans transcriptions, right? It only needs about three seconds of audio, audio before it detects the dominant language, right? So this is great. It also can use foundational models such as Cloud3, basically to do the translations. So this is the general architecture of the application, totally worth checking out. Notice the Amplify is a huge part and piece of this whole thing. And so, of course, it basically sets up all the prerequisites and everything you need in order for this to function. So worth checking out if you want to see some of these AI services in action, not necessarily an operational element, but it will allow you basically to translate some of, some of your favorite live streams using models that make sense to you. All right. So there you have it. Ada updates for November. Stay tuned because we're going to release in December a lot of the reInvent updates, including some of the significant changes. If you liked what we're doing here and you like the releases, hit that like, hit that subscribe sub button, and we will see you next month for another set of AWS updates.